Hi everyone and welcome to Be From Here. This is the first in a series of Fallout 76 how-to videos. This is the start up through level 50 guide. This will be a fairly long video as there's a lot to cover, so hold on to your butts. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, catch me on Discord, or catch me on Twitch. Step 1. Leaving the Vault The first thing you need to consider is what kind of build you want. Due to the limited number of attribute points in Fallout 76, you need to plan your build out before you begin. Stealth Sniper, Hammer Time, Swordmaster, Lord Boomstick, decide before you begin, and plot out a leveling guide using the Nukes and Dragons planner, the link is in the description. There are a lot of great build guides out there, and I will be uploading some to the channel as well. The two items we'll be focusing on. Inspiration is a charisma based perk card in Fallout 76 that gives you an experience boost while on a team. Get this to level 3 ASAP for a 15% experience bonus. Joining a team offers a multitude of bonuses in the hills of Appalachia. Teammates help you in a variety of ways. The two we'll focus on here is better equipment and more experience. Invite everyone to your team. The more players in your team, the better your chances are of finding high quality gear. Your teammates can also share perk cards, granting you access to cards you might not otherwise be able to reach. Use the map and click on player icons, then select invite to team. Step two, you'll want a power armor chassis. Having just the chassis will boost your strength to 11, increase your carry weight, provides damage resistance, and eliminates fall damage. In the footage in the background, you will see six power armor locations that are within easy reach of Vault 76. Point Pleasant, West Virginia Lumber Company, Aaron Holt Homestead, Crosshair, Clarksburg, and Gorge Junkyard. The additional strength from the chassis makes melee extremely useful while you save up ammo if you're a gun build and get your early perk card bonuses. Power armor does require fusion cores. If you need fusion cores, make your way over to the Monaga power plant and claim the workshop. You may need to complete the event powering up to power the fusion core generator. This will also give you power generator plans for your base and workshops. Alternatively, you could travel to the power armor spawn locations mentioned earlier to find fusion cores. An important side note, grenades do good damage regardless of your level. Grenades are very useful at this point in the game. Step 3. Setting up shop. Location matters. Early in your playthrough you will find that you frequently need junk. Fallout 76 has a number of junk extractors around the map. These extractors provide a wide variety of commonly needed scrap. Here's a map of all of the resource extraction sites in 76. I circled two that are ideal for early game base locations. Link in the description or pause the video. Additionally, I suggest building a small farm. Build a water pump and plant some corn. The water pump provides dirty water. You can boil the dirty water at your cooking station to turn it into boiled water. You can cook the boiled water with corn to create corn soup. Corn soup gives you an action point regeneration bonus. Plant two corn, two potatoes, and two mud fruit. Build a water purifier. You can combine the corns, potatoes, and mud fruits with a purified water to make vegetable starch, which is scrapped into four adhesive. Adhesive is another valuable scrap item. Build a bed. Sleeping in a bed gives you a 5% experience bonus for two hours. Combine this with your 15% inspiration bonus and you're at a 20% experience boost. Feed the People is an event that appears at Mama Dulce's Food Processing Plant, which is near Vault 76 due east. The event rewards canned meat, which grants a 5% experience bonus. The Path to Enlightenment is an event that occurs at the Landview Lighthouse. Completing the quest gives the Enlightened bonus a further 5% experience bonus. The Landview Lighthouse is just southeast of Vault 76. Step 4 Story Time. Let's talk about what missions to avoid and why. This will be as spoiler free as possible. The Mayor for a Day quest rewards the All Rise, a two handed super sledgehammer with a heavy rocket modification with a 90% weight reduction and a plus 10 health legendary effect. Save this quest until you're level 50 or later to get the best version of this weapon. The One of Us quest rewards the Bunker Buster. This heavy weapon, explosive, quad barrel, lock-on missile launcher comes with a plus 20% damage legendary effect. Save this until after level 50 to get the best version. This is very useful against flying enemies. 
The Inorganic Solution Quest rewards Rad Shield 8 items. This is a great quest to start, but do not finish it. Once you are able to craft Rad Shields, do not progress the quest further. Do not turn them into the terminal. Leaving the quest open will make it much easier to collect the necessary crafting materials. Rad Shields increase your radiation resistance for 15 minutes without suppressing your mutations. This quest can be located at Ella Ames's bunker in the mire. Next, let's talk about quest to do ASAP. The Mistress of Mystery quest line is a longer one, and it begins once you investigate the corpse of one of its members. The earliest place to find the corpse is the ABR Medical Center. This quest offers several great rewards. The Veil of Secrets mask prevents damage and disease from airborne hazards. The Eye of Ron necklace enhances the power of the Mistress of Mystery set. The Blade of Bastet one-handed sword has increased armor penetration, is increased by the Eye of Ra, and it can be upgraded to higher levels as you level up. The Garb of Mystery's outfit offers ballistic and energy resistance, improves perception and sneak. Effects are increased while wearing the Eye of Ra. It cannot be worn with other armors, unfortunately, and this is best used under power armor. The Investigate Harper's Ferry slash Tracking Unknowns questline rewards the prototype hazmat suit, which provides substantial radiation resistance. This hazmat suit can be worn at any level, unlike its regular counterpart, which requires level 50. This quest can be discovered by locating Harper's Ferry in the mire. Next, let's talk about events to do ASAP. The Breach and Clear event has a small chance to reward the Meteoric Sword which is a 1-star legendary that grants plus 10% damage versus humans, 90% reduced weight, and 50% more durability. The quest itself also rewards a lot of raw war. To take full advantage of the event, the Hornwright ID card can be used to open locked containers and can be located at the Hornwright Industrial Headquarters. The Uranium Fever event provides a good legendary equipment farm until level 45. Enemies do not go above level 40 at this event. The AWOL Armaments event has a guaranteed 3-star legendary, but can be difficult. Powerful Mr. Gutsies are found at this event. The Monster Mash event may be the best non-nuke zone legendary farm in the game. Put on the mask, stand near but do not pick up the candy, and murder the incoming waves. Be warned this is a PvP event so should another player show up, be prepared. Most players tend to be friendly, however. The Violent Night event promises a legendary, lots of waves, and good experience. It also has a chance for a unique Nailer one-handed melee weapon to drop, which is useful if you're going for a bloody melee build. The White Springs Nuke event is hands down the best event in 76 currently. You'll need to have power armor or a hazmat suit to survive the radiation. With a well-trained team, you can farm this location for hours for legendaries and experience. You are special. There are some rules that are true for everyone. Let's talk about what attributes are good for all builds. Strength is used for carry weight, melee damage, shotguns, and heavy weapons like the minigun. Strength is the only attribute that directly affects damage. Strength also has several carry weight bonus cards that you may need if you find yourself over encumbered. Perception is the defining skill for rifle builds. Additionally, the Glowing Sights perk card is useful for all classes around the nuke zones. Endurance defines your hit points and disease resistance. Endurance goes hand in hand with strength and offers several beneficial cards for melee builds. Good Doggy, Nuka Nut, and Chem Fiend can be useful additions to any build. Charisma is one everyone should have at least a few points in. About four points seem to be a good balance. Charisma affects vendor prices and your ability to power up your teammates. If you have three or more Charisma, you can share a perk card with your teammates, making everyone stronger. Inspiration, Magnetic Personality, Suppressor, Strange in Numbers, Hard Bargain, and Tenderizer are useful for any character. Everyone should have exactly five points in intelligence. This unlocks the ability to modify all weapon types, extend the durability of all weapon types, and allows all crafting possibilities. Contractor, Fix-It Good, and Weapon Artisan are useful for everyone. Agility is very much a jack of all trades. Agility determines your action points. Most players will have this in their primary damage source maxed out. Born Survivor, Action Boy, Through Hiker, 
Marathoner, Adrenaline, and Gunfu are useful for all builds. Gunfu works for melee builds as well, just without the damage bonus. Luck usually settles in at around 8 points for most builds. Starch Genes, Class Freak, and Bloody Mess are the most notable cards for all builds. Step 5. The Excavator Power Armor. Once you reach level 25, it's time to get into some Excavator Power Armor. The Excavator Power Armor increases your carry weight by 100 pounds. Each leg can be fitted with the Calibrated Shock modification, which grants another 50 carry weight each. The Torso can be fitted with Motion Assist Servos, granting plus 2 strength and plus 10 carry weight. These modifications can be expensive to craft. The level 25 variant of the Excavator Power Armor set provides 167 damage resistance, 161 energy resistance, and 233 radiation resistance. These increased resistances will make it possible to visit nuke sites. Step 6. Reaching levels 30 and 31. Let's talk about mutations. The first necessary step to gather and keep mutations is the luck perk card starch genes. Starch genes prevents the user from gaining new mutations and prevents rat away from removing mutations. This basically lets you lock in mutations. Unless you're creating a very specific build, all mutations are useful. At level 42, the Charisma perk card Strange in Numbers becomes available. The positive effects of mutations are 25% stronger if your teammates are mutated too. At level 46, the Luck perk card Class Freak becomes available. At level 3, this card reduces the negative effects of perk cards by 75%. This means that while in a team, you'll have more powerful mutations if your teammates have them as well. An example of why they're beneficial. Most builds don't need the Egghead mutation, which grants plus 6 intelligence but minus 3 strength and minus 3 endurance. Once you factor in class freak and strange in numbers, it grants plus 8 intelligence, minus 1 strength, and minus 1 endurance. This gives a substantial bonus to the quality of crafted items. The Emmett Mountain Disposal Site and West Tech Research Facility both have decontamination showers and easily accessible sources of radiation. The decontamination shower removes radiation. Let's talk about the rules that apply to getting mutations. You can only get two mutations per server per day. Server hopping can help you get mutations faster. The odds of getting that second mutation are pretty low effectively making it one mutation per server per day. Mutations are triggered by the amount of hit points that are replaced by radiation. To get mutations, use the following steps. Step 1, unequip starch genes. Step 2, absorb radiation until you're almost dead. Do not dead. Step 3, re-equip starch genes. Step 4, clear your radiation. Step 5, if you did not acquire a mutation, repeat steps 1 through 4. Step 7, where to level up and why level 50 matters. The best normal places to gain experience are the White Springs Golf Club slash the loop through the houses in the area and the West Tech Research Facility. Barring any of the following events, I suggest starting your playtime by running these locations. As mentioned earlier, the following events are good for experience. Uranium Fever, AWOL Armaments, Monster Mash, and Violent Night. Level 50 is important because as of the release of this video, level 50 is the highest possible level equipment can spawn at, meaning the best equipment that can exist in the game will be a level 50 variant. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please leave a like and subscribe. This will let me know if I should make more of this type of content. This is my first actual YouTube video, so be gentle. Links to the Discord, Twitch, and Fallout 76 resources in the doobly-doo. Don't forget to tell someone you love that you love them. Thanks again.